I think that a lot of the importance, the value that we place on keeping the mind, I guess, and uh, uh, speech in synchronization is cultural. Um, and uh, it's been my experience that a good example of that <coughs> is the stereotypical comparison of the English and French Canadian. On a continuum, I find that the English tend to really want to uh, have the mouth on a short rein. The, the mind should be on, uh, in control of the mouth uh, at all times because every time, at least compared to other cultures, every time you open your mouth and say something, you have to say something relevant and important. English Canadians compared to French Canadians feel that way. Now, if you want a comparison, what you would do is uh, you would say compare an English Canadian to an educated Southern Englishman, English person, um, where conversation is a lot more restrained and a lot more um, thought out than, say, an English Canadian would be. Um, the other direction on the continuum, in my experience, has been a French Canadian where bavardé, the, the act of just sitting down and talking for the sake of talking, is, is sort of um, an undeveloped skill on the English side, uh, where you just sit down and you more or less unleash your talking faculties. You just talk for the sake of talking. This isn't, of course, unknown in the English-speaking world. The Irish are pretty good at that. Uh, the Irish are renowned talkers, and they can they they almost pride themselves on being able to talk for hours without saying anything. Or they will say lots of things, but it's all hidden inside of what they overtly said. Um, <clears throat> but the distinction I would like to make here, I guess, in response to Professor Anton's video, is the emphasis, the value that each culture places on. Um, the level of control that the mind places on speech. Um, English culture really puts, puts high value on um, the mind controlling the mouth. Uh, Self-restraint to the point where um, certain things take on almost this in, in non-English eyes almost a ludicrous kind of stereotype. I watched this um, BBC show, which is kind of uh, quite famous, actually, uh, even outside of England. It was called The Song of Lunch with um, Alan Rickman um, and, uh, and uh, Emma Thompson. And it's, uh, it's kind of interesting in, in that it's uh, a couple of middle-class English people, educated people, sitting down and talking over pasta in an Italian restaurant the obsessive thinking and the careful way f speech gets engineered never stops from the beginning to the end of the conversation and you're you see the the whole thing from the point of view of the protagonist the Alan Rickman's character where he is as much having a conversation with himself probably more so than with the person that he's talking to uh, the whole act of conversing is almost like an inner struggle um, and that, you know, that's kind of a stereotype of the way the English speak. The English really want to keep wraps on everything, keep a lid on everything that they do, self-control, to the point where, to say the French-Canadian, this looks a little bit crazy. You know, this person is inner-conflicted um, if he believes that he has to exert that kind of control over everything he says and does. Um, to the point where... Um, George Orwell, when he wrote 1984, which was in many ways a parody of middle class, um, lower middle class English values of the 1930s and 40s, he invented a type of uh, new speak crime called face crime, where you show any evidence of inner conflict, even though there's enormous inner conflicts, um, if you show any outward evidence of it, you're guilty of a crime. It's called face crime. Uh, if there's any evidence that there is some sort of um, slipping of the leash of the mind, where the mind is actually um, not uh, in complete control of the mouth, um, then you're actually guilty of a crime. And I think that that's kind of a takeoff on the English attitude that every time you open your mouth you have to say something relevant. Not necessarily profound, but relevant. 
And if you just start running off at the mouth, uh, people are going to become uncomfortable at that, or at least start poking fun at you as, as a way of bringing your attention to the fact that you're doing something that makes them uncomfortable. Just being a chatterbox is something that you, one just doesn't do in the English-speaking world, whereas in many other cultures it's perfectly acceptable. Um, again, I said in the French-Canadian culture there's far less value placed on enormous restraint uh, uh, of the, the mouth by the brain, but that doesn't mean that they don't do it. Uh, say, compared to, say, uh, a West Indian, the, the French Canadians are quite restrained in the way that they speak. West Indians tend to, um, I won't say that they don't put any uh, restraints on what they're saying, but they don't seem to worry at all about um, saying something relevant every time that they open their mouths. And, and some Canadians, English Canadians, are the same way, the people of the island of Newfoundland. Um, oftentimes they will talk simply for the sake of talking. Simply for, I guess, it's the feeling of relaxing. Uh, taking that restraint off your mind, uh, or taking the restraint off your tongue, allowing your mind and your tongue to sort of operate in harmony in real time, and uh, talk away about whatever comes into your head. And it, in full confidence of everyone else knowing that that's perfectly acceptable. You won't be um, found guilty of face crime. Um, you're just babbling away, talking for the sake of talking. So I think that um, a lot of the value that we place on on how we speak is cultural, and it and it goes essentially to the heart of uh, each individual culture. Um, and it says a lot about each culture's view of the world itself. Um, the stereotypical English worldview is the world is full of traps and pratfalls and we have to be careful and maintain the strong sense of restraint or else um, something bad will happen, civilization will shake, whereas uh, the stereotypical, I guess, um, Mediterranean point of view is life will take care of itself. You don't have to restrain yourself and be quite so anally retentive. Um, and this comes out in the way that they speak. You don't have to be so incredibly careful in the way that you allow your behavior and your mind to become disconnected. It's an interesting cultural thing, and I think that a self-absorbed country like Canada, um, where we have two very, very different cultures trying to coexist inside the same country, like English and French, um, you're almost guaranteed to have this sort of obsessive um, self-examination that takes place. If anything, I, it sounds like I'm sort of putting the French Canadians under a microscope. If anything, I think that they've put English Canadians under an even stronger microscope and uh, kind of serves us Anglos right, really. <laughs> Thank you.